Hello, Yellow Jacket fans. This is Mike Stamus with RamblinWreck.com. Special guest with us today is the head golf coach of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, Bruce Hepler, about to embark on his 17th season at the helm of the Yellow Jackets, coming off a second place finish in the stroke play of the NCAA championship last year, quarter finalists in the uh, match play, and ACC champions for the third straight year. About to start another fall season. Um, it's been a good summer uh, for, your, for your guys, for your, for your team coming back. You have to replace three seniors in your starting lineup, but based on summer performances, you know, there seem to be some pretty able replacements and the future looks pretty good uh, for this year. Um, what's your outlook? Well, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a control freak, mm -hmm. so I kind of like to know how things are going to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, literally maybe since the second or third year here, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably as much uncertainty uh, as we've had. So, uh, you know, until you see it uh, in our uniform and stuff, you know, you, you always worry and a little bit and wonder. But, uh, you know, some guys did have some nice summers, uh, some of the best golf they've ever played. And so it, it's going to be enjoyable. We've got a, a great group of guys who I think will work extremely hard. And it may not be a, a complete portrait here in, in September and October, but I think by the time the ACC tournament rolls around, you know, we should be competitive again. Now, when you look at a guy like uh, a Bo Andrews and a guy like Seth Reeves who uh, haven't played a whole lot, they each won a tournament uh, early in the summer. A lot of top ten finishes. Richie came on strong at the end of the year. How much encouragement does that give you? That's fantastic. Uh, you know, that's, it's all about confidence. And until you have success, sometimes it's hard to believe in what you're doing. And so for those guys to have worked and, and gotten better, you know, I think the hardest thing in our sport because – you know, you leave those guys behind when you go. And it's very discouraging and very disheartening if you're not playing a lot. And I think hopefully the signs that we run a good program is that guys, even when they're not playing, are improving. Mm -hmm. So that's a positive sign for those guys. And I know they feel really good about it. And, you know, those fields are a lot like a college event. So uh, hopefully it did them some good. If it didn't, then, you know, they're missing the point of, of what it's all about. But, again, there's some nice results. Winning especially is important. Uh, I don't know that we've won a bunch of amateur tournaments over the years. So in that regard, it's good for those guys. Great. Now you're about to embark on your marathon qualifier for the first event um, starting, I guess, this weekend, correct? Talk about what that's like. What, is, uh, you know, what do you learn from that outside of the fact that you know who you're going to take into your first event when it's over? Well, I've always kind of believed we should run this uh, much like they run the PGA Tour. And uh, every year they start over again. And whether you just got your card or you're a five-time winner, you know, everybody kind of starts with zero dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a profession where you constantly have to earn things. There's not a lot given to you. And so we've tried to run our program that way. And so we start over for the most part every year. And it's all in the boat and, and we'll see who jumps out of that. But, uh, you know, it's stressful for them. Uh, those who have not played a lot, probably more so than those who've had success doing it. So. Uh, I imagine the air will be a little thin uh, at East Lake on Friday afternoon, but um, you know the idea is that you have to play well to get to go. The coach isn't deciding, and, and I, get, I think that's hopefully one of the reasons why our guys continue to get better is, is you just don't feel like, well, he's done with me. I'm not, I'm not played well. There's no reason to try anymore. Mm -hmm. That They always know there's hope, and it's as, as close as the first qualifier next fall. So uh, it'll be entertaining. Uh, you know, it's different than the golf that they play because if you play poorly in an amateur tournament, you send in your money and you go to another one. Uh, unfortunately for college golf, when you have a qualifier, if you don't play well, you don't play. And that is a very stressful thing for guys who haven't done a lot of that. So it'll be entertaining, and, um, but I think the, the guys who are playing the best will get to go to the farm. Now all five spots up for grabs in this? Everybody's in, yes. Okay. Um, and how much does it help? You know, you, you play some of it at East Lake. you play some of it at the golf club. I think one of them is actually at the farm, is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. How much does that help that it's not all on one golf course? Well, then, it, then I guess, you know, because, you know, I think people think that guys are, ge games are geared differently, long, short, straight, mm -hmm. a little wild or whatever. But by doing uh, a variety of places, then I think that evens out that skill set. And then obviously having the, the final round where the tournament's going to be will give us another day on that golf course. So I, I think it... Uh, one of the things we sell in recruiting is the variety, that you're not doing the same thing every day. You're not kind of playing out of the same divot mm -hmm. that you've played out of on the first hole of the golf course for four years. And so it requires them to continue to think. Green speeds change. Uh, what's demanded is completely different. So I, I think that creates a mind of, you know, I've got to keep thinking and reasoning and, and working through stuff because it's just not 
the same old thing. Now let's talk about your players a little bit. Uh, obviously, the anchor guy you've got coming back, James White, first team All-American, had a very good uh, amateur summer, one of the top 10 amateurs in the country, or in the country right now, one of the best in the world. How much of it, can he make as big a leap from last year to this year as he did from his sophomore to the junior year? Well, I, I think if you look at the leaps that he's made, they've been, they've been huge. And I think once you get to that level, I, I think the improvement becomes very, very, very small mm -hmm. in small increments. And I actually had a conversation with him last night mm -hmm. about that topic of what he needs to expect and his patience level with improving. You know, he wins two of the five best tournaments that there are. He makes first team All-American and, and, and some other things. So they'll have, I just don't think, if he improves two shots around another time, then, mm -hmm. then they're going to wonder what's in the water around here. But, right. uh, you know, there's lots of things that he can provide. He's the older guy now. Uh, he, he does a lot of the right things. He makes really great grades, does a lot of good stuff. And so I, I think in addition to his scoring, it's going to be the first time that James has really had a chance to lead mm -hmm. because he's always kind of been the underclassman got to play early as a freshman with older guys, and that's kind of been the case for two years. So uh, he's on top of the pole now, and uh, if he can play well, I think he can show those guys lots of things. You have one other returning starter back in Richie Wierenski. Um, good finish to his summer, had a, had a pretty good freshman year. Uh, what kind of strides do you expect from him? Well, the good thing is, is you know, he's been through it. Um, you know, I think last year he kind of got carried along and, and the wind was at his back because everybody was playing so well. So it's going to be a little bit different experience. I, I think he'll feel uh, more responsibility, more pressure, uh, obviously just to get out of the qualifiers again. But, you know, he's been around the deal. Uh, he will have played virtually all of the courses before. Uh, we have a few changes in the schedule, but uh, that should help him if he's in the event. And you just hope that another year, um, you know, he needs to make some strides because I, I know he's got some goals to be an All-American and do some of those kind of things. So uh, we, we need to see some improvement out of him. But having played a lot, and again, his beginning of his summer was okay. It wasn't bad. But the last few, uh, you know, I had a chance to win a couple of times. So that's what we need him to do. Then you have uh, that next group of guys that hasn't played a whole lot, has played some. That includes Bo, Andrews, Seth Reeves, Ming Wang, who also had a pretty, pretty yes. good summer. Um, what are you hoping for out of that group of kids? Well, you know, I think it's hard sometimes when you, you don't get to go on the road. I mean, that's a long year. You know, I think this last year, if we didn't had, had we had not played any individuals, a six guy would one guy played one tournament, and that's very disheartening. So what you hope is that um, you know they've 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 learned the golf courses, they've gotten better, and now as they see a chance to kind of break out um, that, that enthusiasm and stuff, that all the work they put into it. Um, will show that they weren't that far away. You know, I just take a step back and go, you know, last year, uh, you know, those guys were getting beat by maybe four of the best 50 amateurs in the world. And, I, and that can be a little disheartening. And, and then they've gone this summer and, and played and, and had some success. So they need to play. Uh, you know, they need to put the lessons that they've learned into, into practice and, and step forward and, and, and play the kind of golf that, that we've played around here for a long time. And then uh, behind them, you have two kids that enrolled in January, like Richie did last year, and uh, Anders Albertson and Ollie Schneider-Jans. Um, also played very well over the summertime. Um, what, you know, how did they progress in their spring and summer in your eyes, and are they ready to compete for some spots? Well, I think last spring obviously made a big difference. Uh, both did well in school. Uh, you know, it gives them a chance to learn the golf courses. You can imagine rolling in here uh, this week, started on Monday, maybe play East Lake once, golf club once, and then a qualifier on Friday, you're at a huge disadvantage, just from an experience standpoint. And so to have played those all spring uh, gives them a huge leg up on trying to get into the first tournament. And, you know, they both have great resumes. Uh, Ollie, a junior Ryder Cup member. And then, you know, Anders has been to two U.S. amateurs and a pub links and, and had a really nice summer, you know, very, almost won the state amateur. Um, so. Uh, I, I think, you know, they're ready to play, and, and, and I, I tell them, you know, that ball doesn't know how old you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have some pretty high expectations of themselves and very competitive kids. So that, that's why I think it's going to be really entertaining and really exciting. I, I think before it's over, we're going to find five really good players. I just can't tell you right. who's going to adjust to how it's done. You know, a lot of them be traveling for the first time and, and dealing with all that goes along with traveling. So. It may take a little bit, but there's, there's some talented guys there. Now, one other, one other guy, newcomer on your team, a transfer from Akron, Drew Zucri. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about him and, and, and what kind of player he is. Well, Drew, Drew uh, you know, was an interesting junior player. I, I guess, you know, recruiting's gotten to where it's so far in advance now. Uh, a lot of times you make decisions maybe before you should. And uh, the summer that we were looking at kids, he played okay. The summer after he signed at Akron and uh, played another year junior golf, he wins two pretty good junior tournaments, plays in the Cannon Cup. He's fourth or fifth, I think, top five of the Rolex tournament in Arkansas. And, you know, had a, a wonderful summer and went up there and, and played for them in the fall, but just decided that that wasn't where he wanted to be. So I uh, returned home and has been taking some classes around Atlanta and, and is ready to go and see what he can do.